Welcome back, Andrew says. Remember, I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once. Coming at you live from the Arctic Circle. We're, f we're freezing up here in our igloo. If you didn't see it the other day, Joe Rogan said he's probably going to vote for Bernie Sanders in the DNC primary. Sanders' campaign quickly jumped on that, promoting it in a video on Twitter, as they should, obviously. Here it is. Take a look. Who are you going to vote for in the primary? I think... I think I'll probably vote for Bernie. Him as a human being, when I was hanging out with him, and yeah. I, I believe in him. I like him. I like him a lot. What Bernie stands for is a guy who, well, look, you could, you could dig up dirt on every single human being that's ever existed if you catch them in their worst moment, and you magnify those moments, and you cut out everything else, and you only display, display those worst moments. That said, you can't find very many with Bernie. He's been insanely consistent his entire life. He's basically been saying the same thing, been for the same thing his whole life. And that in and of itself is a very powerful structure to operate from. Now that's pretty simple, right? Joe, Joe Rogan gives his reasons on why. He believes that he's a good guy. Everyone will have positive or negative reactions to that because Joe Rogan has millions upon millions of fans and they all lean in different political directions. But overall, I think most people would agree. Joe Rogan is pretty down the middle of the road. He's a pretty good guy. Except for the deep parts on the internet where everyone is controlled opposition, everyone's a paid government shill. Maybe Joe Rogan is, maybe we just don't know. Regardless, by the reactions of the mainstream media, you would think that Epstein or O.J. Simpson endorsed Bernie Sanders, even though, I don't know, maybe they'd get pretty favorable reactions from the media these days. But if you didn't know who Joe Rogan was, based on these media reactions, you would think he's the most horrible, bigoted person and the worst guy in the world, and you wouldn't want to promote him at all. And thanks to that very same mainstream media, we now know that Joe Rogan is, as it turns out, the worst person, the biggest bigot in the free world. Here's a few people that agree with me. <laughs> Carlos Maza from Vox, huge company, tried to get Crowder shut down. This guy has 140,000 followers. There's billions of dollars behind Vox. Bernie's campaign cutting a campaign ad with Joe Rogan effing sucks. Rogan is an incredibly influential bigot, and Democrats should be marginalizing him. Damn those influential bigots, you guys. I just I just can't do it with them. Here's another Vox guy, huge company, of course, Aaron Rupar. But imagine how you feel seeing Sanders embrace a transphobe if you're trans. And then if you look at the top replies to this, they're just as hilarious. And this is why the DNC can't stop eating itself. Because even people trying to help are cast aside as, as pieces of garbage. Ryan Grimm from The Intercept, which is another big publication, he says, I'd probably be hopeful that the most trans president ever, I'm guessing that's Bernie Sanders, might be closer to taking office. And that in that environment, I'd hope for major advances. You know, he's positive, he's optimistic, but, you know, Charlotte Clymer... 273,000 followers she has who writes for the biggest LGBT activist group there is. She's like, nah, bruh. Hi, Ryan. Please don't speak for trans people. We have voices. So this original poster is asking a question. Another writer answers it. And then someone's like, don't you speak up for us. We have our own voices. As if this guy answering this question is him trying to, you know, position himself as speaking for an entire community. But just because you don't like what he says, he's, he's an evil bigot. It's, it's insane. And it keeps going on like this. This writer, Jody Jacobson, is pleading to Bernie Sanders' speechwriter, David Serrata. David, is this okay with you? The campaign video lauding the endorsement of a man who's known to be a misogynist, a racist, a homophobe, a transphobe, I'm not making this up, a white nationalist? This is okay. I need to know. I'm literally crushed by this. She's literally crushed by this, you guys. She's made up a bunch of things and she's crushed by it. She reminds me of a... Um, Homer Simpson's dad, Abe Simpson, when he's trying to defend Homer. <laughs> My Homer is not a communist. He may be a liar, a pig, an idiot, a communist, but he is not a porn star. Seriously, though, Joe Rogan, a white nationalist, you could say, like, they're obviously making up a ton of stuff here, but when you start throwing in white nationalist, you go past insane and you go like out of this world. I don't know what the word is for that. Well, I, I see other people saying bad stuff, so it's safe to assume that he's probably a white nationalist too, you guys. And add homophobe in there. This guy who has everyone on his podcast. But let's, let's calm down here. Let's wait a minute. This is Andrew Says. We try to give people the benefit of the doubt, show both sides. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's some footage of Joe Rogan being a huge bigot and a misogynist. 
that I missed that could shed some light on this, and maybe it's a reasonable stance to take off of what he said. Alexis Goldstein, another blue check mark, which uh, makes her better than me. <laughs> I really like Bernie, and I'm disappointed to see the campaign boost Rogan, who has made some very anti-trans comments. I really hope the campaign reconsiders and then post this video as evidence of Rogan's transphobia. Women. Right. So a man becomes a more protected class of woman yeah. than a, a natural-born woman herself. That's very interesting. It's that, crazy. That is. It's very true also. Yeah, it's crazy because yeah. all these women that got beaten up by that man who became a woman who yeah. started fighting in MMA fought two women before ever disclosing the fact that she used to be a man mm -hmm. because she said it was a medical issue that had nothing to do with them, which is just shows you how completely insane the logic behind all Does this is. Does she still is. fight? This <clears throat> She hasn't in a while. But uh, now everybody knows she lost to a woman who she did. Yeah, who, oh. an actual woman who wound up. Uh, yeah, I said actual. Fuck off. Yeah. People are like, what? did you? Oh, Which, did you say actual but woman? That's, but did that's you say? Well, that's subtle, say you guys, doesn't it? Joe Rogan's a transphobe. <laughs> How dare he say that a biological man shouldn't fight a woman? Keeping in mind that this very person cracked somebody's face, literally. Crack somebody's face. Their name is Fallon Fox. Other women don't want to fight uh, him or her. Uh, doesn't really fight anymore, as far as I know. Go look that up on your own if you want. But her imagination, they're running wild here with these accusations of Joe Rogan. Move On, who is a large and overall kind of insane organization, but still very large, had this to say. It's one thing for Joe Rogan to endorse a candidate. It's another for Bernie Sanders' campaign to produce a video bolstering the endorsement of someone known for promoting transphobia, homophobia, Islamophobia, <laughs> racism, and misogyny. We've added Islamophobia in this one, I've noticed. That's very cool. <laughs> He's promoting Islamophobia, you guys. He's promoting transphobes. He's saying, you know what, buy my products, the transphobe uh, drink, energy drink, you know. Uh, but last but not least, CNN, you know, they had to jump into the fray. They were a little bit late than everybody else. I'm kind of disappointed. Here's the article. Bernie Sanders draws criticism for touting Joe Rogan endorsement. Now, this article, which I'll link in the description, it basically uh, transcribes the, the campaign video that they posted that I showed you at the beginning and then shows tweets from other people. Uh, but here's the meat of it where they actually describe Rogan and what his offensive statements are. Rogan, a libertarian leading broadcaster with a public persona in the mold of Howard Stern, that's not true, he's not like Howard Stern at all, is a divisive figure who has said the N-word on his show and in 2013 questioned, using offensive language, you guys, don't forget that part. That's not subjective at all. Everything is offensive to everybody. Whether a transgender MMA fighter should be able to compete against other women, offensive. Quoting Joe Rogan now, if you want to be a woman in the bedroom and you know you want to play house and all that other ish and you feel like you have uh, your body is really a woman's body trapped inside a man's frame and so you got an operation, that's all good in the hood, Rogan said. But you can't fight chicks. <laughs> that's, you know, when you're a good com comedian is that when people can hear your voice in uh, your head when they're reading your stuff. I find that happens with Rogan or like Bill Burr is you can really hear it or Jay Leno. Hey, what's in the news today? <laughs> So because Joe Rogan doesn't think women doesn't think women should fight women who used to be men. He's a transphobe. Also, I'm going to implore anyone out there to find me a clip of Joe Rogan using the N-word where it's not I don't think they mean Nicaragua as well when they say the N-word, you guys, just so you know, it might be something else. I'd like somebody to find where he's saying that where he isn't quoting something or it isn't in a proper context. Joe Rogan isn't racist. He has people who are non-white, which the, this media will have you believe that means everyone who's not white is exactly the same and should think the same. You're not going to find him using this word in a non-proper context, in a hateful context. I'm sorry, it just doesn't exist. Uh, go ahead and try to find it. This is utter trash journalism, and when you think that CNN could just stay out of it, they could just present it like most of this article does. They got to go and like, using offensive language, he said the N-word on his show once and without saying what he was actually talking about or how he actually used it. It's just remarkable. It's remarkable that Sanders supporters just can't take this W on this one. They can't just be like, Joe Rogan is hugely influential. He's a very large audience. Let's take this win and uh, hope that that means that other people who may normally not have supported Bernie Sanders are going to say that Joe Rogan does, does and says he might vote for them. Maybe I'll look into it more. Maybe I'll become a Sanders voter. But no, because he doesn't agree with everything you say. He's a horrible person. 
Maybe that's why they can't win. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why multiple people on Bernie Sanders' staff have said that they want a violent revolution if he loses. Um, even liberals go to the gulags, and then they said the gulags weren't that bad. It was not as bad as pr prisons in 2020. That stuff came out in a recent Project Veritas video. James O'Keefe looked that up if you haven't seen it. Bernie Sanders' staff, you know, pretty violent, it turns out. Some of them. Obviously not going to be all of them, but a few weirdo guys who are being paid by him. Cra pretty crazy. Now, while I wildly disagree with Joe Rogan on most of his politics, some of the stuff that, the, that uh, we see eye to eye on are pretty simple things. But most of the stuff regarding policy, I think he himself, and he always does, and he will in the future, I'm sure, many times say that he doesn't know what he's talking about when it comes to politics, and I tend to agree. Even though I love Joe Rogan, I tend to agree he doesn't really know what he's talking about when it comes to politics. I just thought that the way he's talked about Andrew Yang's policy so much, and Tulsi Gabbard, he's had them both on his show, I think he's had Gabbard on a couple times, uh, they're more reasonable, I think, so I thought he was going to vote for them. Conspiracy theorists will tell you, though, that he's Rogan's in the DNC's pocket, therefore he can endorse people that the DNC doesn't like, even though I don't think they like Bernie Sanders either. Uh, I'm not a scientist, I just play one on TV, so don't ask me. Sanders, while yes, Rogan is correct, he's held the same stances for a long time, um, he's had the same ideas for a long time for his whole political career. Uh, 30, 40 years, whatever it is. The problem is they're poorly thought out ideas. That's where we sort of break off in the dogma here. Uh, he has no real notable accomplishments. They're basically pipe, like communist socialist pipe dreams that never work out. I'll have a video coming out soon on one of those. I can also think of several Sanders, Sanderses with better accomplishments. There's Barry Sanders. There's Dion Sanders. There's Colonel Sanders. <laughs> But just be, can you tell that I really wanted to say that? But just because I disagree with Joe Rogan doesn't make him a transphobe. It definitely doesn't make him a white nationalist. And it doesn't mean I don't like him. It does, what else is there? An Islamophobe? An anti-dentite? <laughs> Kramer, he's just a dentist. Yeah, and you're an anti-dentite. <laughs> I am not an anti-dentite. You're a rabid anti-dentite. Joe Rogan is so middle of the road that if you can't take him endorsing your guy as a win, then you need to rethink about what rethink what your goals actually are. Are your goals to win? Are your goals to change minds, have people come onto your side, to have others agree with you, and look into your policies or your beliefs and then agree with you and think that you're right and be like, hey, I was wrong, you were right. Who am I kidding? That's not their goals. <laughs> The progressive goal is believe what I say, do what I say, speak the way I say, and don't use words that I condemn you from using, no matter how ridiculous it is. And if you don't, then you must be a racist, you're a sexist, you're not an ally, you're standing in the way of the true revolution. <laughs> and when you shun people or excommunicate them or try to de-platform them or get their lives ruined, and you say, well, free speech has its consequences, because they said men should fight women because you believe men who become women are real women. But I'm sorry to tell you that it's more than likely you belong to a cult. If you're not allowed to say, speak, or act any differently from the people around you, um, that's a cult. And if you don't believe you are, then you're certainly acting like you belong to one. All these people, you get on Twitter and you find the people that agree with you and you're just like, hey, this, this is obviously how everybody should think. Uh, Snapchat stories tell me this and Vox tells me this. Obviously, that everyone's in agreement that uh, somebody who doesn't is a transphobe. I'm sure you see it all the time on Instagram stories or on Facebook posts where people are so sure that everybody agrees with them that they're very brazen in, in posting these things because they're like, well, according to uh, Instagram and, and Facebook, everybody agrees with this and uh, nobody could possibly disagree with me or else they're obviously a bigot, you guys. And have you ever tried to talk to these people? They're going to freak out. It's happened to me. They freak out within seconds. Be like, How could you? But you can't speak differently in the cult because you know what? Um, I'll use some good, some good uh, terminology here. When you think and act differently and you're not just all one, men and women, when we're not just the same, and when we're all races and we're just the same, you're hurting the collective. <laughs> right. <laughs>